give the Lord a hand for it. He's going to be seated in the throne of Christ. So I'm so excited, as I said, about serving the Lord as you start to grow with the knowledge and understanding of God and allowing the Lord to take you to the places that he wants you to be. You get to that place where it doesn't matter anymore because you know that whatever it is, it is good. And you know whatever it is, there's something in it for you to move you to where you want to go in the Lord anyway. But allowing the Lord to deliver you from those things that would hinder you from really enjoying life to the fullest. Bring you to the place where you really start to recognize how awesome God really is in your life every day. And how he's bringing you to a place. That place in which he created you to be from the beginning. And I'm so excited about that because it's, it's going to require us to adjust the way we think. To adjust the way we see things and do things. Understanding better the process as we go uh, to put things in place to strengthen your mind, to strengthen your faith. Because man in his hurry up society is always anxious to get to the finished product. Not real, it puts more pressure on your mind and your heart and your faith system uh, to trust God freely without fear, doubt, or anxiety. But so often, we want to hurry up and get to the end. And there's lack of proper preparation. And I think a lot of it has to do with the myth that the enemy put into the world about the goodness of man. So often that we think that you know, we've come into the world that man is basically good. He, he basically strives to do the right thing. And that's just not true. And it's in that mindset that we have started to think more highly of ourselves than we should. That's really not beneficial when it comes to growing and becoming all that God has called us to be. When you come into a world thinking that you're good, you start looking for things to blame when you don't come out as good as you think you are in certain situations. And you start finding yourself pointing fingers and having prejudice and hatred toward those things that you believe are causing you not to act as good as you believe you are. That was a lie put into our society by Satan. And that lie is so effective because it starts when we are born into this world. People don't realize you're born innocent, but you're also born depraved. You're born innocent because you're born without any knowledge or understanding of anything. And it's at that time of your life where those that were leading you and raising you should have understood that you were a depraved individual. And they should have started a process of taking control of your mind, training you and developing you into the things of righteousness. Developing a mindset that when you started to grow in knowledge, you would have had a foundation to fight against all the things that were coming against you to move you in that path that Satan has designed for us to follow because of the fallen nature we inherited from Adam. But unfortunately, it's those precious years that we just kind of float through without your awareness it is training them and setting a foundation that's going to put them on the road to unrighteousness. Because we have been lulled to sleep by the innocents. All we talk about is how cute they are. You should have been working harder than you ever should have been working in their lives. Because at that age, you have to understand, they don't know nothing about this world. They don't know what's popular or unpopular. They don't know what this is or that is. But what do we start doing? We start just shouting with all that stuff that the world says is important. They didn't expect to just snatch them off at some age when you feel like it's just not popular anymore. Why start? What do they know about TV? What do they know about music? What do they know about any of that stuff? But if you try to teach them more of how to examine that stuff and show them how the enemy is doing this and this to take you away from God, 
because you are giving them such, talking in such a love for God and who God created them to be. They want to have a disdain for anything that they believe would lead them away from God. That would lead them from having a strong relationship with you because of the standards that you have to set. But what do we do? Even when we try, we allow others in the world to do their thing. We have to stop that. Yes. That's it. As we start to see the detriment that it brings mm -hmm. into our people's lives as they get older, it makes them have to fight battles that they shouldn't have to even be thinking of. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about humanity. We want to talk about if you really want to, Serve God in the spirit and the truth. Your children don't have to go out into the world as teenagers. Where do we get that from? Yeah, that is not true, you all. That is a lie from Satan. Yes, that's it. That happens because we have not taken the responsibility and authority to raise them in nothing but the things of God. Yes. So when they get to that age and these things start to draw, pull at them, it won't be influential because they have established established what's valuable to them. Yes. And you've been able to celebrate that time of growing in your life with God. And the benefits, because you're sharing your blessings with them and how excited you are, how God is growing your life, and you're moving close to God. And these are the things you celebrate. You don't celebrate holidays. You celebrate the victories that God is bringing in your life. You're creating a new world. But if they don't know what that world looks like, how would they ever know when they follow it? Yeah, that's it. We celebrate the things of the world and expect them not to be drawn to it. Yeah, that's it. We're supposed to be building the kingdom of God. We celebrate spiritual victories. Yes, that's it. Spiritual achievements. Yeah. We celebrate going into a closer relationship with God. We celebrate being united on our own one accord. Yes. Those are the things we have a, a party about. Yeah. We have a party in this week. Why? Because at this point, this day, we are operating as one. We need to celebrate that. Yeah. Who ever thought about such a thing? Yeah. Amen. We're going to go out this week. Why? Because we didn't do no fighting or fussing this week. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man. Everybody did what they were supposed to do. Yes. I just brought this for all of you. Yes, that's it. We ain't saying don't buy stuff. We said buy it for the right reasons. Right reasons. That's it. Are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. 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 We're really celebrating that. Boy. Who knows anything what it looks like to overcome lying? Yes, amen. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. We will have a special treatment. Why? Where my daddy? Yeah. Daddy overcame lying today. That's well, well, how you doing, Daddy? Yes. God drove me into a situation where yes. I normally flop. Yes, man. And today, yeah, we came today yes. is a great day Thank in our you. household. Thank you, Lord. Because yes. today we took authority over a spirit that was trying to take us down the wrong road and was trying his best yes. to make me give That's you it. all to yep. him. That's it. Today you free. We don't yes. celebrate. Thank you, Lord. Yes. yes. Lord, that's it. That's what the children of God yes. do. Yeah, that's it. That's what they celebrate. Amen. Victories from God. Yes, that's it. That guarantee you that you now have control and you're teaching your children how to take control of their lives all along the way. Thank you, yes. Lord. You're teaching them what is important to talk about at the dinner table. Yep, that's it. You're teaching them what to talk about when you're riding along the road. Yes, that's it. When you're just hanging out. Yeah. When you're out somewhere and you see someone attack the family, you say, look, see that right there? You see what they're trying to do? Yeah. They're trying to divide us. Yeah. That's it. They're trying to plant a seed in your head yes. that's going to take you away from God. Yes. That's it. You see, most people would have saw that. Yeah. They would just got caught up. Yeah. Man, let's go get some ice cream. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> they can't be trying to sneak in on us today. Go ahead. But we all were aware. Yeah. See, that's what we haven't come to yet. Yeah, yeah. We can't blame our children no. for not being excited about the kingdom of God. Amen. You never told them what to be excited about. Amen. That's it. That's it. Whenever you talk to them about the kingdom of God,
people of God, you want to talk about things you were not happy with. Yep. Why you like this? Why you do that? Why you do that? Why you say this? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You haven't taught me anything else yeah. to say Amen. or do Amen. or to think is important. Yes. The only thing I see you do is important is rushing off the work. Yeah, that's it. The only time you try to be on time is when you're going to work. Amen, that's it. The only time you're excited is when you get paid. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's what I see. Yeah, I don't care how you think you dress it, but yeah. I see your demeanor change yes. when certain things happen. Thank the Lord. That's it. Are you here? Yes. Yes. So we're going to talk about humanity today. Yes, all right. We want to deal with that spirit that's trying to uh, duke us, dupe us, yeah. to give a lot of stuff away. Because mm -hmm. we're growing in the kingdom of God. We're establishing a new era of leadership. We're creating a new generation for ministry service. And you should be excited that you've been chosen in the building and establishing of such an awesome thing. To lead a lost and dying world yeah. into the kingdom of God. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. Yes. Let's get the Lord a head, praise. Let's get the Lord a head. Let's celebrate. He has to show. He celebrates. That's the stuff we talk about today, praise. That's the stuff we feel excited about. Yes. That's the stuff we want to share. Yes. But man, we're building a new era of leadership, man. A new generation. We're going to be coming from Colossians chapter 1. Verses 21 through 23. I serve an awesome God, and I'm yes. so excited. Yes. I'm just so excited. As you start to get to that place where it doesn't matter, you start to understand and see why. Because what God is doing is so awesome. Why would you get distracted by such irrelevant issues when God is doing such an awesome thing right in your presence? We start at verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you heard, which, has, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. We want to talk about humanity. In verse 21, we are told that before Jesus' accomplishment on the cross, through his death, burial, and resurrection, Mankind was alienated, hostile in mind toward God and lived a life that was characterized by human deeds. Even though he was created in the image and likeness of God, free from sin, with a rational nature, intelligence and a moral responsibility to God, it was God's, because it was God's intention in the creation that man should glorify him by representing his, human, his nature to a lost and dying world. And enjoy him forever. See, that was God's intent when he created us. And that's the thing that the enemy constantly drives us away from. To make us think we are hopeless and worthless. With no purpose. With no values. And when you don't know those things, you start falling for just about anything that sounds good in the human nature. And it has you trying a lot of things that don't work. But however, you have to understand, because all humanity descended from Adam, all humanity inherited a nature corrupted by sin with Satan as its master. Through Adam's one act of disobedience, humanity lost its innocence, incurred the penalty of spiritual and physical death, became subject of, subjects of God's wrath. Mankind became totally corrupt and incapable of choosing or doing that which is acceptable to God. That's what you understand about those little ones that you brought into the world. They are incapable of doing things to please God. Young people, you were born incapable of pleasing God 
and go to the things of God. You were born with a corrupt, totally sinful nature. That's the reality we have to deal with first when it comes to humanity. Yes, you were born innocent, without knowledge, but you were born with a fallen, sinful nature that automatically gravitates toward the things of Satan. That's why you find yourself struggling so much now, because you are now receiving the word of God, and it contradicts a lot of the things that your human nature is trying to tell you to do. That's where the fight is going on. But as we share that same struggle, if you really pay attention, how is it impacting the relationship with the first love that you knew on this earth? Young people, older people, how are the things that you desire impacting the love relationships in your life? People that you know love you. They have shown you that they love you. But are the things that you desire and want to happen, are they causing your relationship to grow stronger and closer together? Or are they putting a strain on that relationship? Nine times out of ten, they're putting a strain on those relationships. They're causing conflict. And the older you get, the greater the conflict. The older you get, the greater the conflict. Because there has not been enough focus on the fact that you were born with a fallen nature. And as we are growing and learning more how to uh, combat that issue, we have to understand that there are circumstances and consequences that come with our lack of knowledge and how to really bring that beast under control from birth. But not to get dismayed or discouraged. God is still in the authority business. That's why we have to, as adults, quickly move to places where it doesn't matter. That we can focus on what's more important so that we can walk in authority regardless of what we're dealing with. Because Satan and his demons must submit to that authority. So that's why we must be focused. Which brings us to our first principle as we learn more about humanity. Humanity was born enemies of God. You got to understand that when you raise your child when they come to earth, you got to raise them with that mindset that this child is an enemy to God. And I've been given the responsibility to reconcile that child to God, and I have the perfect opportunity because I don't have nothing to combat right now other than a drive and a desire. But if I let it practice behaviors to develop attitudes that's going to lead it away from God, the battle is going to be more of a struggle. Now, what sacrifice am I willing to make? Well, of course. It says that corrupt company, bad company corrupts good morals. So the first thing you need to do is keep them out of Satan's company as much as possible. Amen. That's true. Number one, Amen. that means you have to be a control of all of the tools that he uses yes. to influence their mind. But who could make such a decision when surrounded by so much opposition? It brings us to Genesis 6, 5, and 6. Because we need to know this because this lie out here that man is born good. If I just keep my children, my wife, and my husband away from certain people and certain environments, we can have a strong, better relationship. And nothing could be further from the truth. God doesn't do it. He throw you out there to the wolves. Yeah. Day one, you don't have to get no 10 years of service before he sent you out. First day, he sent you out to be tested. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. 
No one is born good or seeking after God. No one is born with reverence of God. And you can find that expounded on in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. But what has the enemy tried to make our society believe? You were basically born good. It all depends on your environment, how you were raised, the things that you were subjected to, genes. All of that determines whether you become a good or a bad person. When psychiatrists talk to you, what's the first thing they ask you? How's your relationship with your mom? How's your relationship with your dad and your family? Because their whole approach says that you encounter something that messed you up. Look at all the time that is wasted. And you can just go right to the root. Now, you were born as messed up as you will ever be. And this stuff that we're dealing with now is just the evidence that it's so, but also proof that no one trained you how to move away and take authority over this thing. Yeah. That's the issue. Yeah. And we spend millions of dollars to answer all these questions and end up just as bad off as we were the first day we arrived. And we learn how to suppress things. And we learn, we are taught by society so to surround ourselves with like-minded people. And the only thing those groups do is support you in staying where you are. They don't support you or take you to a place to be delivered yeah. from that thing that you struggle with. Mm -hmm. That's what we have to understand. It has to be a process of helping you be delivered from that condition in which you were born. Not what the name of did, but how you were born. See, that's why Satan introduced this lie into our society. That man is basically good. And this is what society teaches. This is from an article written by L. Ron Hubbard. Article of 1980 entitled Ethics, Justice, and the Dynamics. It's just a brief summary. It says that man is basically good. He is basically well-intentioned. He does not want to harm himself or others. When an individual does harm social moral standards and ethics, he will destroy himself in an effort to save the social moral standards and ethics. And they say, well, it's just like when a person robs a bank. Yeah. They leave signs and evidence yeah. because they want you to catch them. Yeah. To yeah. save them from their Sales. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> but that's what's being taught. Yeah, this is permeating our society. This is what psychiatrists are trying to make every sinful nature you have to be a illness. Yeah. That must be treated with some kind of medicine. medicine. So you know who they're working for. Yeah. Well, that's what's being taught. And you have to understand, we laugh at that. But as our society moves further and further away from God, yep. this is the only thing that's going to make sense. Yep. Exactly. And it's catching hold. Yes, it is. Because it's being taught by what we call, quote unquote, the experts. experts. Yep, that's it. Who knows man better than the one who created him? But that's what's being taught in our society. That's why Christianity and Jesus Christ is becoming a bad word. Because it makes you deal with yourself. Yes. It makes you acknowledge and admit that you are your problem. Yeah. That you are messed up. And the only way to be fixed is through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And faith in what he did on the cross. See, the truth of the matter is this. We were all born without hope and without a relationship with God. We were all born enemies of God. We were all born as messed up as we will ever be. Let that sink in. We see it, but let it sink in. It's because of this birth defect. Call it what it is. We're born with a birth defect. Messed up. 
you were born, this birth defect is why you were born completely depraved. And there's nothing you, your parents, your pastor, or anyone else can do to save you. You understand? Young people, do you understand? There ain't nothing nobody can do to save you. You were born with a sinful nation because all men is a descendant of Adam. That's just a fact of life. It doesn't matter how quiet and gentle and sweet you are, down below the surface rages a depraved, self-centered, self-destructive beast who has one mission and one mission only, to take your soul to hell. By any means, hook or crook. In verse 22, we are told that Jesus has made things right between mankind and God by offering his body as a living sacrifice for sin. Because man has no recruitment power to enable him to rescue himself. He is hopelessly lost. Young people, you were born hopelessly lost. Just because you're nice, you treat your parents nice, you know how to say the right things, you do the right things, you are born hopelessly lost. Never allow your good behavior to fool you to think that you have a relationship with God. That is the trick of the enemy. You may become a morally good person that society thinks you're the best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. You will be the hardest person yeah. for the Lord to reach. Man. Because you have been led to believe that you are all right. And people just don't understand you if you have having problems. That is a lie from the enemy. Man's salvation is therefore holy of God's grace through the redemptive work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mankind was born with no recruitment powers, as we said. That's why you have to understand that mankind is sinful by nature, by choice, and by the divine prophecy made in Genesis to Adam. Mankind is born spiritually dead, characterized by unlawful acts and sins, and by his very nature is an object of God's wrath. Young people, you were born objects of God's wrath. Why, why, why are you saying that? Um, look at, like I said, how, as you are getting older and growing, is that causing peace and unity in your family? Are you becoming the object and the source? Fussing, fighting, anger, division, relationships being strained, are you in your madness making those in your circle who are not caught up at the same time you are, making them have to work overtime to get along with you? Are you making those in your circles have to adapt to your fallen behavior because you refuse to show the love you need to show to make sure everyone in your circle is okay, but you're more focused on what you want? That's how you know who you're serving. Right. Don't let your mind fool you to tell you it's just because they took my car. It shouldn't matter. Share it. You're going to get it back. Amen. It's not like that's the only one you have. Amen. That's selfishness saying, I don't want you touching my stuff. Amen. As you get older, do you become more antisocial or social? Amen. Do you become more What's the word? Self-centered and greedy? Like, stay out of my room. Stay out of my stuff. Get off of me. Get away from me. Don't talk to me. I'm talking to my friends. Get away. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. That's These it. people have been with you all your life. life. They've shown you nothing but love. They put up with you with stuff that these people you're trying to call your friends will not put up with or tolerate. Yeah. That's it. But you see how the enemy has already started mm -hmm. bringing chaos into your life, yeah. 
taking away the peace, the instability, that's what leads to sickness. Yeah. That's what leads to being started to make self-destructive decisions yeah. and behaviors that will not work toward you being able to be successful in the environments that you're going to find yourself in. Amen. That's true. Because everyone has to change in your environment for you to be happy. Yep. That's it. How selfish and self-centered can you be? You ever thought about changing yourself? Yeah. Being things were okay before you got that way? Amen. Weren't things great before you started to get that way? <clears throat> that should be the evidence that you are changing in the wrong direction if your desire is to spend eternity with God. This brings us to our second principle as we want to learn more about this humanity because we need to be able to see it at work and the product that it produces so we can know on our own without anybody having to tell us. When I check that, it doesn't line up with the fruit of the Spirit. So what must I do based on what I'm learning? What must I do based on what I'm learning? Second principle. Humanity's relationship with God was made right by Jesus. You know, as I just said, born again believers. I said humanity's relationship with God was made right with Jesus. Because what made the relationship bad? Sin. Jesus came to pay the sin debt. Man, humanity's relationship with God was made, was made right by Jesus. Mankind's relationship with God was made right by Jesus. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 19. See, there's a lot of times we get caught in these moments, the enemy wants our mind to rush through them, you know? He doesn't want you thinking. He doesn't want you thinking it through. He doesn't want you recognizing your behavior while you're going through. He wants to rush you through, but look at others around you. And it's through that process you never position yourself to be dealt with by God and be able to hear the Holy Spirit. So Corinthians 5. 14 through 19. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, so that they who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who died and rose again on their behalf. How long have we been reading that? We know it by heart, don't we? But why did he die? So that those who live will no longer live for themselves, young people. Who are you living for? Old people, who are you living for? And as we are going here, I'm hoping you are recognizing your attitude where God brings you to certain places. Especially those places that you struggle with. And I want you to recognize the, the, the unconditional love of God. That he'll give you what you really want in those situations, regardless of what you're trying to make him out say. And you learn to understand and receive that truth about yourself and deal with it and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, he'll bring you back to that place again to give you another opportunity not to give your blessing away. Amen. That's it. He loves you that much. Yeah. But he wants you to see how the enemy has programmed your mind to receive the blessings from God. And normally they come as something unpleasant, uncomfortable, or not needed at this time. Yeah, amen. That's true. Because you have plans. Yeah, yeah. Who said you were in charge? Yes. He says make plans. Well, who is the one that ordered the steps? God. See, what God sees as blessings, the world sees as burdens. Because it's selfish and self-centered. It needs to travel light. 
less responsibility. So that they can. If you say you love God, he will tell you what he wants you to do by unfolding your life to see whether you really trust him and see whether he's in charge. Isn't he funny like that? Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are new. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. God is no longer holding people's sins against them. But see, if you don't know how to counter sin and promote righteousness, guess what you're going to always be focusing on? So as you move out in your witness, it doesn't matter how messed up people are. If they talk about serving God and you see them doing things, don't, don't get caught on how God talks about what they're doing. That's it. Ask them this question. Well, who is your God? Yeah, that's it. Wow. Who is your God? Why do you serve him? Yeah. How do you know when you are in good standing with him? Mm -hmm. What does he expect of you? What can you expect of him? How do you know when you're in line with him? Mm -hmm. Start asking those questions. Amen. And let them answer. Because yeah. every time they answer, you write it down. Then you just listen and talk to you about that God. Then they'll be able to see how well they know that God. They may not be able to answer those questions. Yeah. They may say, well, well, why do you love him? And they start talking about how good he is, how he blessed them, mm -hmm. how he do this and this and how he's always on time. And you just ask them, let me ask you a question. Are you married? Sure. You're not married? No. You have a special, significant they have children. They have anybody in their life. What if I ask those individuals why they love you or how they know they love you? And they said, I love him because he do this for me, he do that for me, he give me this, he always there looking out for me. What would you think? They're using me. They only care about me because of what I can do for them. Yeah. What happens when you can't provide those things anymore? Yes. That's it. So how would you know you love the Lord? Because I sacrifice everything to serve Him. Yeah. Everything I do, I do to please Him. I committed my life to Him for Him to use me as He chooses. That's how I know I love God. How do you know you love those in your life? Because I've committed my life to making them happy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've committed my life to doing everything that's going to build them up and make them better people. Yes. I committed my life to bringing value to their lives. Yeah. That's how I know I love my wife. Mm -hmm. That's how I know I love my child. That's how I know I love my husband. That's how I know I love my parents. Because I spent all of my time trying to show them how much I love them. By doing whatever I need to do to keep them happy. Yeah. That's what true love is. And you'd be amazed at most people that say they're in love with somebody yeah. will never answer it that way. They always talk about how the person loves them yeah. and what the person is doing to show them love. Yeah. They never talk about what they're doing to show love to the individual. And I've tested that. Just ask, well, how do you know you love God? And they just roll off all these. Well, how do you know you love this? Well, they do this and they do that. So you just love them because of what they're doing for you. That does not sound like love to me. That sounds like usury. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like you are an opportunist. Yeah. That you are looking for those that are going to make a difference in your life, but you have nothing to offer them. 
how selfish and self-centered and uncaring. But that's not who God has called us to be. See, although Adam sinned of disobedience so all mankind is a slavery to Satan, God in his love for mankind put a plan in place to deliver him. God did this because he created man to glorify him by representing his nature and character to the world and to enjoy him forever. Not the things of the world, but to enjoy God. Satan wants you to enjoy the things of the world. And they conflict each other. And you can find that in Isaiah 43, 7. See, God demonstrates his unconditional love for mankind by sending Jesus Christ, his son, to die on mankind's behalf. While we were still enemies, while we were still enemies, God gave his only begotten son. Now that's love. That's love. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection made it possible for mankind to be declared righteous without any efforts on his part. Adam's one sin of disobedience resulted in condemnation to all mankind. Because of this, Jesus' one act of righteousness brought justification of life and was offered to all mankind. For as through Adam's one act of disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the one act of obedience of Jesus, mankind now has the opportunity to be made righteous. Through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he took care of the sin debt. That's no longer an issue with God. Sin is no longer an issue with God. You have to understand that. The issue with God is this. Will you accept Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to get your debt paid off so you and I can be all right? That's God's issue. Not sin. Listen, I put a plan in place. The day I kicked Satan out of heaven, I put a plan in place. I put a plan in place. And it's come to pass. But are you willing to accept that plan? This righteousness, however, does not depend on any virtue or work of man. This righteousness is based on the fact of Jesus taking full responsibility for Adam's sin of disobedience. That's what Jesus did. He took full responsibility for what Adam did. This is what allows mankind to be given credit for Jesus' one act of righteousness through his faith in this fact to be made right with God. This is the only way God is able to be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. This is the only way mankind's relationship with God can be restored. Jesus took full responsibility for what Adam did and paid the sin debt off. The only issue that mankind has with God now is will he accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior who has paid his debt off for him. That is the only reason you will not make it into heaven. Not sin. That's why we focus on righteousness not sin. A sin that is paid. The issue on the table now is righteousness. Will you accept righteousness for unrighteousness? Will you give up the unrighteousness that you inherited for the righteousness that Jesus purchased for you? That's the issue. That's what's on the table. Because there's no other name under heaven by which mankind can be restored back to God. That's in Acts 4, 12. That's what's on the table, people. Righteousness. The sin that has been paid. Sin is no longer the issue. The issue is, will you accept the righteousness of God and turn in your unrighteousness, your unrighteousness that you inherited from Satan through Adam? That's what's on the table for all mankind. Will you make a trade to serve God? In verse 23, we are told that mankind can only be looked upon as holy, blameless, and above reproach if he receives what Jesus did on his behalf through his death, burial, and resurrection. This must be received in faith, which will be characterized by righteous living. And you can support that with 1 John 
chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 to 10. Will you exchange your unrighteousness for the righteousness that Jesus purchased? To be a part of God's family is and has always been conditional. That condition has always been the same. Obey God by doing what he says. Obedience is what represents love for God and characterizes those who are a part of his family. This is where election comes in, into play, where God, before the foundation of the world, predetermined the standards for being a part of his family before the creation of the world. Satan, through it has always been God's standard. To be in God's family, you must obey him. That didn't start after the fall. That started before the fall. That is not a law. That is a condition. That is a requirement. Satan got kicked out of heaven. His first act of disobedience. Adam got kicked out of God's family because of his one act of disobedience. And he closed the door for all mankind behind him. See, obedience is what represents love for God and characterizes those who are part of God's family. It's because of this fact that you can't take responsibility for the condition in which you were born because Adam closed the door on you. So you don't have to take a Take responsibility for the condition you find yourself struggling with. You don't have to try to explain it. You don't have to try to make it make sense. Because you had nothing to do with that condition that you were born in. But you are going to have to take responsibility for the condition in which you leave this world. Thanks to Jesus and taking full responsibility for what Adam did. Paying the sin debt. And open the door once again for mankind to come back into the family of God. You see, that's the decision you have to make to people. All the people, that's the decision you have to make sure you have made if your desire is to spend eternity with God. This is why Jesus was born into the world to undo all that Adam had done by letting sin into the world Rendering mankind powerless and carrying out God's will for his life. You find that in Romans 6, 20-23. Which reads, For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Therefore, what benefit were you then deriving from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the outcome of those things is death. But now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome of eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Young people, that's why you're having such a hard time struggling when you know true and clearly, clearly what the truth is. You're struggling because you were born without the ability to do what is right. But because you are being taught by God, God has been putting information and truths in your mind that won't allow you to run off and follow those sinful desires without a struggle, conviction, and taking away your joy. Because you will have to actually become something that you know you're not to do those things, and you don't realize it yet, but that's what really gives you peace and enjoyment to know that you are able to be who you know you're created to be. That's why you have those little secrets that you hope no one finds out. And you're terrified, wondering when they will. Because it's just something about it. You know they're going to find out sooner or later. Those little things that you do when you're not around that you know you should be doing, but find yourself can't get it out of your mind because you knew you didn't do the right thing. That's because God is teaching you and training you to know for certain that what you're doing does not align with who he created you to be. And you know you're not happy. That's why it's a secret. Yes. Right. Because you understand that secrets are something that Satan keeps. Yeah. 
He hides the truth. He doesn't come to the light because his deeds are dark. But those who are of the light, they come to the light because they know everything that they're doing is right in line with God. And they're excited about it. Amen. And they want to share it. Yes. Where do you find yourself going with the people? When you stop sharing with the ones that you know really love you, and you've created a circle of people that you know it doesn't align with the standards that you've been taught in the things of God. This brings us to our third principle. Humanity can only be declared blameless, holy, and above reproach through continuous faith in Jesus Christ, as you see in verse 23. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I all and became a minister. See, you could be declared blameless, holy, and righteous in the sight of God and above reproach. That means that no one can bring a charge against you to continue faith in Jesus Christ. Humanity can only be declared blameless, holy, and above reproach. Humanity can only be declared blameless, holy, and above reproach through continuous faith in Jesus Christ. Through continuous faith in Jesus Christ. But what do you mean, Pastor? Hebrews 10, 36 through 39. Hebrews 10, 36 through 39. For you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. For yet in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the persevering, preserving of the soul. See, that's the deception that put out to the enemy that you can backslide as a Gentile, as a believer. Not so. The Jews backslide, backslid. But they were chosen. And because God is true to his word, because he's chosen, they still want to get in. He only offered Gentiles an opportunity for you to decide whether you want to follow him and serve him. But he gave you clear instructions on how to. He is giving you clear instruction on what love him looks like. Yeah. And he will not lower his standard because it has been the standard since before the creation of time. If you love God, you will obey him. Your faith of obedience must endure until the end of your stay here on this earth. If you are truly born again, it is God who makes sure you stand and enter into heaven. Jude 1, 20 through 25. Jude 1, 20 through 25. But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life, and have mercy on some who are doubting, save others, snatching them out of the fire, and some have mercy with fear, hitting even the garment polluted by the flesh. Now to him, who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory blameless with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Amen. It is God that's going to keep you and make you stand. If you are truly a part of his family. If you are truly submitted to God and serving him, Romans 14, 1 through 4. Romans 14, 1 through 4. Now, except for one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats vegetables only. The one who 
eats is not to regard with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats. For God has accepted him. Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls. And he will stand. For the Lord is able to make him stand. Isn't that exciting news? You will stand. Because God is going to make sure you stand. Not me. Not your parents. Not anybody else. That's why we can relax, people. We can be sure that God is going to make sure his people stand. That they enter in to be all that God has called them to be. Conclusion. All humanity was born spiritually dead, separated from God, and God's enemy. Under no circumstances can mankind be considered righteous or able to ever understand spiritual truths, much less ever seek after God on their own accord. It is only through God's grace that mankind can receive the ability to accept God's gift of salvation. The only evidence that mankind has received the gift of salvation is through continuous faith in Jesus and what he accomplished through his death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore, all whom the Father calls to himself will come in faith, and all who come in faith to the Father will endure. We must, we must not become confused concerning these truths, because God tells us that in reference to those who do fall away, Matthew 24, 10, whose love will grow cold, Matthew 24, 12, Matthew 24, 10, and Matthew 24, 12, are written women who claim that they are in Christ, but in reality are not. Titus 1, 16. See, the question is not can you lose your salvation, but do you backslide? And the question is, are you truly born again? That's the question. I just said saved because saved is a continuous process that goes on till you leave here. The question is, did you have that one-time event where you had an interaction with God and that you were born again? I didn't say you went to the mortar's bench and followed a procedure or a ritual where you come down, say you want to give your life to the Lord, you got baptized, drunk in water, came up and told that you were straight. That's not an encounter with God. That's a religious ritual. It was a practice that God told us to keep but it comes after the fact of being born again spiritually. Yeah. And going through that process just represents something that already has happened. So what are you actually saying, Pastor Parliament? The day, the morning's bench, should be a day that's set aside for people that have already accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they're coming before the world to acknowledge that. Because yeah. the learning has to take place. Don't know where to take place from sitting back on that spew right there and walking up here. Don't enough let it go on to make that stand for you. And the evidence of that is the sin that we have proliferating the religious community today. A lot of people that went through that ritual that believe that they have a relationship with God but have no kind of fruit or evidence that they have been born again and transformed into a new creation. They profess to know God for by their deeds they deny him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. That is the word of God. And I don't know where it finds you at today, but I hope it finds you excited. Because it's just confirmation of what you already learned. But I hope it's giving you a stronger foundation to be able to walk out in your faith and unconditional love without having to focus on people's sins. That debt has been paid. You have to learn the way of the kingdom. Building the kingdom. Developing attitudes and behaviors that line up with the fruit of the Spirit. You have to know how to witness to people from a righteous standpoint. Understanding that the sin debt has been paid. Jesus took care of that part. Your part is to reconcile people back to God. And you reconcile people back to God by going to that place that God created them to be because that will never change. Conditions, circumstances will change, but the fact that you're spirit created in the image and likeness of God will never change. That is you. 
That is who you are. Until we learn how to address the real person by building them up from that starting block. Don't look at how bad their human nature is. Look at who they are. They are spirit created in the image and likeness of God. The one thing that every human being has in common. That is the only place that you can start in any relationship and have a solid foundation to build a strong, effective relationship and bring value to people's lives because your focus will be on building who they are, not what they become since the fall, which leads to nothing but destruction. Aren't you glad about it? Don't, aren't you glad that you know how to witness to one another now? How to minister to one another? How to raise your children to be sure that they don't have to go out there no more? Because you have put things in place. And even if you had a little lull in that, you have learned how to operate a kingdom authority. You have learned how to nurture an environment of love and peace that is conducive to spiritual growth. To operate in that authority, to, to put the spirit realm at peace from the demonic side. Well, they must take their hands off of the stuff that you've been given responsibility for, which will free you to set up that witness protection plan for those that you're responsible for. And able to minister to them to move them out of their places that they may be short in. And those places won't take them away, but it will be a place to strengthen them to make sure they stay. Isn't that awesome? Don't you want them to stay? Think about what we heard today. Get excited as we go out these doors, armed with all the tools to show unconditional love. Keep down the walls and the doors of Satan and set the captives free. Even if it starts with me for a Isn't it exciting? Stay waiting for the word. So we can start right now.